Hey guys, can you hear me? If you can hear the sound of my voice, let me know. We're about to get this started. Can you hear me loud and clear? Let me know. You can hear the sound of my voice, put it there in the comments. I'm going to see you and we'll be there to answer. Awesome. So I'm thinking of just doing this. Um, I'm thinking of doing this without showing my face. Um, but I'm, I'm wondering, maybe if you guys could contribute money. I might agree to show my face. So if you want to show, if you want me to show my face, everybody contributes five five thousand. All the thirty four of you right now, and the more that will join. Awesome, awesome. So Lambie Day Johnson is going to join us in a few minutes. I need to just get this message across to everyone else who is sleeping. I'm going to send it to the Telegram channel right now. I had no idea that this was still on.
All right, guys, uh, I've sent the message out to Telegram. I think everybody is ready. All right, how's it going, guys? How are you doing? Good evening. So today we are going to be with this quick. Lambie Day Johnson will be joining us soon. He is right now in New York in the United States of America, and he's going to be joining us all the way from there. The time difference is... Uh, it's, it's interesting, so we'll have to round this off so he can go off to his other commitments. So I trust that by now everyone has been able to go through the documents I put out there. I can bet many people have not gone through it. Make sure you download that document so you can have more informed questions, all right? It's headstartafrica.com slash MWF. I, I, I'm going to put a link in, in, the, in the rolling lower third at the bottom. So if you haven't seen it, you can go and have a look at it. So Lamide will be joining us very soon. This is about applications for the Mandela Washington Fellowship 2020. And so if you're within the ages of 18 and 35, they're going to have trainings and internships. And it's a, it's a year-long program for young Africans who are going to be leaders in their community. So uh, this year, we're having about 700 Africans who are going to be selected, and a good number of that quota will come from nigeria so lamide is going to be teaching us how exactly you can put your best foot forward lamide is an, an alumni of this program and he is currently the president of the nigerian branch right called the branch or the nigerian section the nigerian branch of the mandela washington fellows all right so in a few short minutes i will call upon lamide and he will be with us. If you know someone who needs to benefit from this training, let them know, get them on board right now. I will be with you soon with Lamide. Ijoma, are you really listening from USA? Don't play with us. All right, all right, all right. Hello, Lamide Johnson. You are live. Hi, John. Awesome, awesome, awesome. We are live right here on the Head Start Africa community everyone can you see lamide johnson if you can see lamide johnson let me see a yeah yeah in the comments below all right i bet you can awesome so we're glad to have you here lamide i know that you have a lot going on right now and it's a huge sacrifice of time and resources to be here with us so thank you thank you thank you so much for joining us thank you so much john for the honor to be here today um I've been trying to download the video you sent to me on okay. on this. I just am succeeding in doing that. Okay. And I wrote a post on, on Facebook now to okay. say I've I've been wanting to be on your platform for ages. God knows how long. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you know, and and so I'm super excited to be doing this now. Um yeah. thank you for the honor. Thank you for letting me speak on your platform and I'm happy to share the knowledge I have on the Mandela Washington Fellowship with your community. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so, so much. So first of all, um, people, what people need to know now is that you are actually a Mandela Washington Fellow, an mm -hmm. alumni of the Mandela Washington Fellowship. And mm -hmm. so most of the people on my community, I guess they were just hearing about the whole fellowship from the first time or wow. from the first time through me. So let us know what exactly the Mandela Washington Fellowship is and what it means for young people in Nigeria. Fantastic. Um, so the Mandela Washington Fellowship is a program by the United States uh, USAID and the State Department. Um, it's arguably one of the most prestigious fellowships um, in the United States where a couple of people, let's say leaders in Nigeria, will be selected and sent to the United States for six weeks. They will be attached to an institute, a university, while there for the six weeks. Um, there, there are three main tracks, um, civic leadership, uh, public administration, and business and entrepreneurship. 
So depending on the track you are you you you, you got selected into, you know, you will be you'll be deployed to and attached to university. And for some people, um, they will go ahead to do a professional development uh, um, internship with uh, organizations in the United States. So people will work with really, really, really big institutions in the United States for an additional period of time uh, there. That do, that's the major component of uh, the Mandela Washington Fellowship. Now, when you get back, you have access to huge materials, a huge network, um, you have access to to huge opportunities. We they, they have like grant opportunities. Um, in my sets, we have people who got grants. Um, I think a hundred a hundred thousand USD, fifty thousand USD, twenty five thousand USD, depending on the kind of products you're working on. Um, so there are huge opportunities for people to carry on their projects within their immediate communities uh, once they are back. Yeah. Awesome. So I've actually heard a lot about the fellowship itself and mm -hmm. and i've heard about how the whole thing goes and what does what does it really do to the mind of people who are especially coming from certain circumstances in third world africa because okay. we have a, we have a certain mindset um that has been stimulated by a lot of the hardship and the scarcity uh -huh. and so when you're imme immediately transplanted into that sort of culture and environment what does yeah. that do for those people <laughs> Man, man that, that's a hard question, man. Like, <laughs> like, like, John, John, let's say the fellowship changed my life. Yeah. Um, I studied a course I don't like to talk about in the university. Yeah. You yeah. Know, and um, John, John, don't give me that laugh. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> John, I was trying to stifle it. <laughs> John, stop it. John, stop it. So, so you know, like, like all I have is let, let me let me explain it. When I was um, looking for a girl to get married to. My, and I spoke to my dad about it. And I said to him, I saw a girl in school. He said to me, you know, so I studied in Futa, in Accra. He said to me, yes. Namdi, all the girls you will see are those in Futa. You yeah. won't know that they are prettier girls, they are richer girls, they are more yeah. successful girls. Yeah. Outside. And I didn't understand what he was saying. You know, until I moved back to Abuja and I'm like, whoa, what? <laughs> exactly that's how it is right <laughs> now now when you're here in nigeria you don't know what is possible yeah until you go outside like the moment i got into the plane and landed in chicago in the united states my mind changed like yeah the possibilities the the the, the experiences the exposure the people like yeah. you will begin to see things from another perspective completely and yeah. And and it blows your mind if if you're doing projects that were a thousand dollars before, you be thinking mm -hmm. of doing projects that are a million dollars. Like yes. your, your perspective to life would change completely. Yes. I'm I'm currently in New York and and you know it's easy for me to blend in because this is this is the third time I'm coming here and all expense paid. And this is because yeah. I've been part of one fellowship. Like how yes. would one fellowship give you access to several amazing opportunities like yeah. I, I, I can't i can't exhaust totally exhaust the opportunities available to those who get into the fellowship awesome all right guys so you've heard it straight from lambda johnson this is an opportunity of a lifetime so let's head right into the meat of things people want to apply for this year's um, fellowship um a, a a such a huge number this time is being selected 700 leaders are going to be selected for the summer of 2020 yeah. So what can people do now in order to enhance their chances of being selected? Now, um, John, this is, this, is, this is the meat of our conversation here today. And yeah. um, I, let me check for my notes, try to pull that out. Yeah. Give me a second. Let me split my screen. OK. Um, OK, great. Now, um, John, you know, I always tell people, I have several people, in fact, since the day you posted that we, I, I was going to take the session, I yeah. think I've had about 200 friend requests okay. um, on Facebook. Unfortunately, okay. I think I'm over, I'm over, um, capacity. I'm over capacity now, so but I'm going to see how I can delete other people because I'm sure this is from the Head Start um, yes. um, community and I really like to connect with, with them. Um, okay. I, I wrote my application in... I wrote my application in in two hours. Interesting. 
and I, and I wrote it four hours before deadline. And and I got in, and that was my fourth time writing. Fourth, fourth time. Fourth, yeah, fourth time. And, and so you know, there there are eight things I'm gonna say. Um, if you wanna if you wanna get into the Mandela Washington Fellowship, the eight things I'll say. And if you're listening to me, then you pick your pen, because I'm not gonna repeat this again. Um, people actually have to pay a lot of money for this. Mm. Um, but I'm gonna do this for free because it's John. Merci beaucoup. Eight things you must do. Number one, how badly do you want this? You know, each time we 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 get access to such opportunities, sometimes we we do not quite show that we really want it. <laughs> and 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 people know, like, how badly do you want this? How how do you do you want it so bad that if you miss it now and you don't get in, you're gonna apply next year? Like, I would like you to take some time to answer that question. How badly do you want it? Hi, Jockey, I can see you. Hi, how are you? How badly do you want this? You know, the first time I applied for the fellowship, I was applying because I, I saw that a friend of mine, Buki Shonibari, had got into the fellowship. And just because of what he did, she, she met Obama. I'm like, oh my God, really? Like, I love Obama. I want to, I want to be with Obama. I want to see him. <laughs> That was the motivation, and then boom, boom. I, I got in, you know, I, I applied. I spent like like three weeks trying to figure out the application. I packaged it. I sent it to a couple of people to help me to review. There's a friend of mine, Adepeju Jayoba, who, who, by the way, is doing a lot of uh, uh, tips on, on, on review. You should follow her on, on Facebook. You know, mm -hmm. I, I reached out to her, please help me to review this. I, I want to get in, and... I got invited for the interview. I didn't get it. First time. Second time, I applied. Same thing. I didn't get it. Third time, I told my wife, man, I'm not going to apply for this. And these guys are just treating me anyhow. I'm not going to do it. And my wife says, just do it. I applied and I didn't get it. Who applies for stuff over and over again and doesn't get it? And he just applies. And it's simple. Like, now, now listen. At the third time, I did not understand exactly why I really wanted to do this. I did not know why it was so, why I wanted this so bad. I didn't know. And then one day I was talking to my dad, and my dad was saying to me, hey, son, recall that um, I promised to send you to Harvard. And I was like, ah, see this man, no. The man that sent me to Futa, Akure, where the school fees were like 13500 <laughs> every year. He wants them to Harvard, that they're paying dollars. Like, Daddy, how far? And he says, you know, if even if I cannot send you with my money, I can send you my prayers. Then I realized that whoa, the reason why I wanted this so bad was because I wanted to get into a school in the United States. I wanted to get into an Ivy League school. That was it. That was my motivation. But then the last time I was applying, I I I, I forgot about it. I was like, no, these guys are messing me up. I want this so bad, but probably. Mm, Maybe I'm not the right person for it. My wife told me to apply on the last day. I don't know how she saw it. You know, just like John, you're speaking about it on her start. You know, someone, yeah. someone just saw it somewhere and just called me and said, hey, this application, are you going to put it in? Like, no, it's, it's ending in by 9 o'clock today. She says, just sit down and just do it. You've done it before, do it again. In two hours, I was done and I submitted. And I got it this time out. So the first thing you must know is how badly do you want this? Number two, establish your why. Establish your why. Like, listen, guys. Uh, every time you want to do something in life, even if it's something as simple as this application, why are you doing it? Because let me explain to you. When you establish your why, the person who's reviewing it is going to see exactly why you're applying for it. So why you? Why do you want this? Do you want this because you want to put this on your LinkedIn? Do you want this before because you want to announce? To the world on facebook and say i've got into the fellowship do you want this because you want to just have a trip to the united states do you want this because you want to get into a school do you want this because you want to raise fund do you want this because you want to get exposure why do you want this define it write it down look the the, the universe functions in a way that anytime something's going to happen anytime something's happening at all it has it it, it listens to purpose it listens to, it, it purpose commands anything that happens in life purpose commands it but you need to understand what your why is. Number three, 
Number three, start your application with the end in mind. Start your application with the end in mind. Look, guys, if you if you touch, you're gonna come here to listen to me speak about several tips that other people are sharing on Facebook, you know, breaking down the questions and all. That's really good. That's amazing. I love my friends are doing that. I'm so proud of them. Right. That's not what I'm gonna do here today. I'm gonna I'm gonna go deep, like I'm gonna go to your to your, to your soul. I wanna be able to help you understand the mindset that you need to have to be able to ace this interview. Um, the application rather. So start, and like I said, number three, start with start to start your application with the end in mind. And let me help you. Let me help you through it. It means as you start your application, you must begin to think of what you want the person who is reading to take away. Do you understand? Like, what is this person going to take away at the end? Like, listen, once you read, when when the person has read the application, by the end, at the end of the application, what should the person think about you? What kind of person, what kind of personnel should the person have in his mind about the kind of person you are and why you why you should be the best person to get the fellowship? Do you get what I mean? This is important. This is critical. And you are the one who is going to make it happen. So when you're, when you're writing the application, make sure you review all the questions. Look at it, right? Respond to them. Like I always say to people, like, when you do this application, don't just go straight to the application and answer it straight up. I use Google Doc, right? So I will advise you to install Google Doc or paper. Dropbox. Um, Dropbox has something called paper. So you can use paper or you can use. Um, John, are you here? Yeah, I'm here with you. Go on. Ah, oh, great. You can use paper.dropbox or you can use Google Doc. I use Google Doc and it's very simple. When I use Google Doc, then I'm able to share links with my mentors and my friends to go through it. And they're able to go through what I have written and give me feedback real time. And I'm able to correct it real time. So, you know, those people who are sending me emails and saying, hey, send me attachment, it's, it's very little I can do with an attachment, an attached PDF or an attached Word documents, except I want to help you to track changes. But when you send me a Google Doc link, it's easy for, it's easy for me to just go check it out, right? And and immediately um, give you comments as I go by and tell you where to yeah, I mean, improve on. So, so, so when you do that, right, make sure you copy all the questions out. Um, I guess, John, John, you shared with them the, a link. I didn't check what that link is. Is it on the application? Yes, it's uh, just a sec. It's the application guidelines. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Now that application guidelines had um, tips on the questions you should be expecting. Our advice should have gone to check them already before now, right? And so you know all the questions they're going to ask. Now when you answer everything, what is that person, the person who's going to check it, what's it going to have at the end of the day? What, what, what mice is going to have about you? Number four, humans with one head do the marking. I, I want you to write it down. Humans with one head do the marking. Because people think that it's such a gruesome process. Look, a large number of people apply for this. During my time, 36 or 34,000 people applied for, for the fellowship. I, I remember that clearly. And, and, and we had only... 700 or 500 i can't remember now how many people were selected um i think it was 500 i can't, I can't remember uh, but very few number of people were selected for this right um human beings are marking it and let me explain why human beings why it's important for you to know that human beings are right are, are marking it and how this helps you because humans are writing it marking it rather it simply means that you have an opportunity Mm. to appeal to the emotions of the human yes like because a human like john obidi is marking it <laughs> like <laughs> think about it like john is going to have your scripts he's going to look at it he's going to have some guidelines to mark right and he's going to mark yeah. your script now he's going to do that what does john want to see how would john connect with me mm. and this is why this is why i bring you into my fourth thing which is storytelling until I realize that stories are the most powerful tool you can use to win any interview, any application, any grant applications at all. Then did I start earning so much money? Then did I start getting into so many, so many fellowships? Like guys, um, with all sense of humility, there is no application I have put out that I haven't gotten, none, mm. none. And that's because I understand the concept of storytelling. 
So yeah. when you're gonna write this application, you must use stories. Like from the very beginning to the end. Look, people think that when you write these applications, it's, it's about writing a lot of a bunch of facts and figures. It's about um, proving to people the impact you have made. While this is correct, the person who's gonna review is gonna get bored in the first 15 seconds if you don't capture the person. If you don't capture yeah. the emotions of the person, if you don't hold the person down, and the only way you can hold an individual down who is going to review your application is by telling him the story of your life. Now, this is not a tales by moonlight story, <laughs> right? This is not stories you tell your your son when you're talking him to bed. This is not the story you tell your babe, you know, when you're trying to woo her. This is this is a story you can tell in the boardroom. This is a business story. Right and 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 the several concepts, right, that are entrenched in understanding how to use the concept of business storytelling, mm -hmm. especially when you're writing such applications. We'll go into that in due time. I'm gonna, um, John, you need to you need to remind me to to tell you the six steps, right, in telling story like a pro. Okay, please remind me to do that. Uh, what number are we on? Number five. Number five, yeah, number five. Now, if you lie, you will get caught. If you lie, you will get caught. Uh, um, I, I'm, I'm currently in New York and I was invited by Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation for something called the Goalkeepers Initiative. And a couple of my friends have reached out to me to ask me, Lamdi, how did you get in? And I tell all of them, I was nominated. I didn't apply for this. Mm -hmm. Uh, and um, and I'm like I, I still don't know who nominated me, but I, I, thought, I, I thought you were saying Nagodo. No, well, God, we thank God, we thank God. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we thank God, like we thank God for everything. But you know, when I got the email from Bill and he said, "Hey, Lamdi, congratulations, you've been nominated." Blah 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 blah. And it was very specific about the work I was doing. Yeah. I, was, I was quite amazed, and and, and I said to myself. How about if I had lied about the things I'm doing? How about if I lied about the companies I'm imparting? How about if I lied about the founders and CEOs I'm helping to build their businesses? How about if I lied about the entrepreneurs who are trying to who I'm trying to help to build amazing companies? How about if I lied about these figures? What's gonna happen? Like so randomly, somebody's checking, somebody's confirming, somebody's trying to validate. Look, if it doesn't bite you in the ass today. Pardon my French. It's going to bite you in the ass tomorrow. And, and so why limit an opportunity to be great with a lie now? Let me break it further. Let me break it further. If you lie in your applications about the things you're doing, there are ways you'll be verified. You know, I was shocked. Two days before I got invited, um, before I got the confirmation email that I have been selected for the Mandela Washington Fellowship. John, you know, in LinkedIn, there's a way yeah. you will know who checked, who is checking you out. Yes. I got a notification in my, in my, in my, in my Gmail saying the US State Department mm -hmm. was checking my LinkedIn profile. Mm -hmm. Sharp, sharp, I went there. And I saw a picture of the person. I'm like, hey, what? Hey, Trump, I hope I didn't do anything. Why? Why are these guys checking me out? Yeah. Unknown to me, these guys were trying to validate several things that were written in my application. And so they'll go to your Instagram, they'll go to your Facebook, they'll go to your Twitter, they'll check what you're saying. You know, for those people who all they talk about is Big Brother is good, though. I'm not saying it's bad. I don't watch it, but it's good for those who are watching, okay? But if all that's on your timeline, on your social media, is about Big Brother and not about the community you're impacting and the water projects you're doing or, or the campaigns you're doing or the advocacy you're doing, you know, it, it, it calls for questioning and you won't get the application because you're lying. Yeah. If I say all I do is to help entrepreneurs, then most of the things I write about should be about should, should center about entrepreneurs. Like, yeah. I got into the application because I said I am a business storyteller, and so you go to my page and you see me writing a lot of stories. You see me writing lengthy, lengthy posts. You know that this guy is a storyteller. He's not lying. Yeah. You know, so 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 guys, you need to be able to tell the truth, and it must be consistent. It must be consistent in your life. What what people think about you, your friends, your family. What you post on social media, these things are very critical. And so, you know, when, my, when I have a couple of friends who are 
you know, there's freedom of speech and everything, right? But if you are on this track like ours, right, that you want to be able to get access to nations, you there, there, there's a way you have to speak and be represented on social media. Responsibility of speech. Very important, like very important. I have a friend who was getting to the United States and because he had written a tweet, he didn't get in. He has, he has gotten to US, so he was at the immigration. The guy, they turned him back because of what he has written. I, and this is a long time ago, like he has forgotten about it. Did, and because I don't do that, like I didn't have to start censoring my social media handles to check for things I had done or things I had said. No, because I know that I was very deliberate. I'm not gonna. Mm. I'm not gonna engage things like I'm not gonna send replies or like posts that are bad yeah. because I know that yeah. I need something from this government. So if I need something from these countries and from this government, why, why, why insult them? You know, why, why, why speak bad about them? You know, so, so you must be well represented. This is this is very critical, right? So please, guys, don't lie. If you lie, you get caught. Number six, choose the right track. Choose the right track. A friend of mine mentioned to me. Um, uh, she she got into the goalkeepers too. Uh, her name is Hawa, and she she didn't get in the first time she applied because she chose the wrong track. And also, there, there are three main tracks, right? And so you must be able to certify what track you fall on. The first time I was applying, I, I put in civic leadership because I felt like I wanted to help communities, right? I wanted to help people. I'm really passionate about people, but everything I was was business. <laughs> but I didn't realize it because I just felt like um, I'm more of a civic guy. I was working in a university, uh, in Pan African University. I was I was doing HR. I had a farm and I was helping communities and all. You know, I, I had I had it all skewed up, right? So one of the core things you must do is to you have to go through all three tracks and benchmark it with what you're doing currently and make a decision on which track you want to fall under. This is super, super, super important. Super important. So please do select only the best track available to you. Okay? Number seven, show your impact. Number seven, show your impact. I'm currently right doing a course. I'm, I'm working on a course. Um, an online course called Impact Storytelling. Mm. And 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 I, I John, when I came to the United States, you know, I was speaking to my wife a couple of minutes before our call, and she says, Hey Lambs, um, have you bought yourself some shoes and and a jacket? And I'm like, baby, no, I spent all my money in Amazon. I was buying books. I bought about seven to ten books on storytelling. <laughs> John, I did not believe it. Like, I did not believe it. Like, That's what I do too. Oh my All God. All my money just goes on books. <laughs> John, 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 do you know what, what worries me the most? What worries me is my luggage because the yeah. books are heavy. Like, yeah. I have, they had heavy books. I'm like, yeah. oh my God, what have I done to myself, man? Books. Because I want to write a course on impact storytelling. My mission is simple. Yeah. I want to be able to help people tell their impact stories because oh. you're doing so much, but nobody's seen it. You know, for us, adventurous platforms, we've done so many things. Um, give me a second, please. My okay. battery is going low and for That's whatever all right. reason. You saw it? It's in that, uh, my charger. All right. Fantastic. Okay, got it. All right, cool. Yes, fantastic. Sorry about that. Um, for people in business now, for us, adventures platforms, right? We do so much, but we don't talk about them. We do so much. We help so many people. We've invested the money in several companies, but we don't talk about them because we like to be very modest. You know, church has taught us to be very calm and modest. That the the world we see it your by your fruits, you shall know them. Yeah. If you don't talk about your fruits, nobody will know you. Sometimes your fruits need to have a voice. Exactly. And one of the core ways to do it is through stories. People need to see you. People need to feel you. People need to hear you. And they can do you can you can achieve all of this through stories. Right? 
Now, 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 you have to show your impact. You are doing 100 people before, now you are doing 1,000 people. You must be able to show your growth. You need to show your success stories. You need to be able to show your journey stories. You need to show your origin stories. And then, let, me, let me explain these three stories to you, okay? So you understand this. And, and, and why are you going to do the application? Everything I've spoken about, you can just apply it, okay? Number one, your origin story. That's why you started what you're doing. John, why did you start Head Start Africa? That's an essay. Yes, I know. <laughs> okay. Um, multiple reasons. Number one, it came out of something that I hate. And that is uh, the, the, the most ignorant people are the loudest on social media. You know, and, and I felt like it was a poison to my generation. Mm. A, lot, a lot of people don't know their left from their right. Mm. And if they are not caught at that critical crossroads of their lives, there goes our generation. Mm. So I thought, I thought that it was my duty to just be visible and be mm. that one that directs them according to my own ethos. So that's mm -hmm. why I started, you know. Mm -hmm. And of course, mm -hmm. multiple purposes grew from there. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. other things like to bring information because I saw that a lot of young people just suffered for nothing mm -hmm. um, just because they don't have the right information. Mm -hmm. So I thought that I could just organize a lot of young people mm -hmm. into a community. Mm -hmm. I could just channel information like this. Now, many people don't even know about the Mandela Washington Fellowship, all right, but they're just hearing it for the first time. So things like this, let's because it's, it's not just to say don't watch Rebellion Nigeria. Don't yep. watch Rebellion Nigeria. Yep. All right. Okay. So it's, it's what they call carrot and stick. <laughs> okay, so I will I will kill you for watching Robert and Niger. I will kill you for talking about it. Yeah, but I will also bring the carrot and offer you. This is what you can do with your life. Exactly, <laughs> what your life what you can do with your life. Yeah. So yeah. that among many others, guys, guys, can you see how John had effortlessly spoken about why? That's his mm -hmm. origin. For some people, you know, <laughs> for some for some people, because you don't know why you're doing what you're doing, and you don't know your origin. Then when people ask you questions about introduce yourself, it's you you, you give me titles, mm. you give them titles. I'm the executive director of Ventures Platform. What, is that? <laughs> what does that mean? What does it mean? What does it mean? I'm director of partnerships Ventures Platform. What does it mean? It means nothing. It means it's, it's just a title. I'm John. Did not tell me I am CEO, founder, convener, visionary. You know, <laughs> man, guys, guys, guys. Listen, your origin story is key. Number two, your journey story. Your journey story is your process. Everything you've experienced while you're doing what you're doing, how you are going from point A to point B, the challenges you've had, you know, the people you've experienced, the people you've helped, okay? The obstacles you've met, how you overcame these obstacles. That's your mm. journey story. Number three is your success story. This one, I like. These are the people who you have helped to become great. You know, uh, since I became a fellow last year, for the people who went, I have like out of those in Nigeria, we have about fifty something people in Nigeria that went. Ten people, I reviewed the application. Like I'm super. Yeah. That's a success to me because I'm able to help people to just use one simple concept to be able to get into the application that I have gotten into. This is simple, right? So, 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 so that's a success. What if, if, if John is going to talk about the success of Head Start Africa? He needs to be able to tell us about the people who he has helped. For instance, the application. That I'm using for this call now. I have never seen it before. Yeah. John, you and I will have to have a conversation about it. So yeah. Have a ministry. This yeah. is helping me. And so someday when I do a training for a hundred people, for instance, and it was it is huge, largely successful, I'm gonna give that success to Head South Africa. Mm. Because they're they're helping to achieve that. Okay. Uh mm. what's no what number are we on? Number seven, right? I, I I don't know. I think miracle is keep helping us keep tabs. Miracle, miracle number Alpha. I guess it should be number seven. Uh, I think we're on number eight. Okay. Yep, I've seen it. We're number eight. Fantastic. Now, stay consistent with your narrative. I'm going to answer your question soon. I'm seeing somebody. What about those who work in government organization? What would they be that story? Your own story is even easy. It's even easy. It's a global story. We'll go there soon. Now, let me finish this um, eight, nine things I want to talk about. So, number eight, stay consistent with your narrative. Let me shock you guys. The first time I applied for the fellowship, four years ago, five years ago, actually, um, I was 24. That's strange. Because you can only apply from 25. That's strange. So, it's six years ago I applied. Strange. Um, yeah. Six years ago. Interesting. 
Now, I was 24 at the time. I'm 30 now. And you know, John is my daddy. John, me, <laughs> our father. <laughs> Age is but a number. That's what I, that what I said. <laughs> it's those of us that don't want to grow old that we say it's a number. <laughs> <laughs> those who have grown old now, the <laughs> <laughs> change. We are young at heart. We are <laughs> now, 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 the first time I applied, let me explain. I was super enthusiastic. I had done my NYSC. I was working in Pan African University. I was doing HR. I had got a huge grant um, to have a farm. I was writing. I was I was writing poem. Those days I used to write poem. If you check, if you check my Instagram, sorry, my Facebook um, timeline from 2011, 12, 13, 14, this poem we've seen there, love stories. You know, that was me at the time. I was a church boy, super church boy. I was preaching in church. So when they called me for the interview, I, I wore a native attire. I love native a lot. But this time around, the native was it was a serious native. It was yellow in color, yellow and green. It's, it looked terrible. I did not realize at the time, of course. I didn't understand that there was a psychology of colors when you go for mm. interviews. When you because what the color you wear really matters. That's why when John came to the Mandela Washington Fellowship in Ghana, he wore black and white. You think I don't know what you're doing? Yeah, we know what you're doing. <laughs> you, came, you came, you came and you established authority because black yeah. is a symbol of authority, it's calm. Yeah. So it, 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 it's very possible. And so if yeah. I'm going to have any conversation with anybody, if I'm going to talk to a large number of people, I have to be on black. I'm black, yeah. but I have to be on black because it commands. Yes. I didn't know this. I was wearing yeah. yellow and green. Green. <laughs> <laughs> the land like, is green. I, like, am I Nigeria? So, so I got there, I got there, and then they asked me who I am. And guess what? I introduced myself and I told them I was a farmer. I had a fish farm. Um, I had I had poultry. I, I, I told them I was a HR guy. I told them I was... Um, I was a poet. I told them I was a youth pastor in my church. And, and the white guy that was interviewing me was shocked. He was confused because he did not know who I was. You know, but, but this were the things I was doing. But it did not make sense to him. In his mind, it's like, okay, why are you not focusing on just the farm? Like, why are you not just on the farm? And I said, look, it's because I have several skills. Because I have several skills. And honestly, I do have several skills. And I'm focusing on a bunch of things. But I wasn't consistent. My, my narrative was not one. I see. And, and, and so they need you to be consistent. You need to bring, look, guys, I know you are in Head Start Africa. John has loaded you up with several things. And you guys are high flyers, like, right? You're doing several things at the same time. You work in a, in a government organization. You've established your not-for-profit organization. You're doing your side hustle. You have a Facebook group. Like, you, you're in church. You're doing, you're doing a drama group, for instance. You're doing several things. But guys, you know, one of the core things you must do is to be consistent in your narrative. What is that one thing that defines who you are? What is that one thing that defines? Look, if if, I, if if all has been said and done, what will people take you as? Who are you? That has to be clear. Like sometimes we're not clear about who you are. Um, somebody asked a question. Did you say you can apply from 25 or you can't apply if you're over 25? I applied when I was 24, okay? Um... At that time, there was an exception for people who were younger. And they said, if you are, except, the word was exceptional, you'll be, you'll, be, you'll, be, you'll be let in, okay? But I didn't get in. I don't know if that's the same thing that applies to this time around, but right now it's from 25 to 35. For oh, from 25 to 35? Yes. If you're above okay. 35, you can't get in. Okay. Okay. Because yeah. yeah. I, said, I said 18 to 35 before, so maybe that was wrong. That was yes. definitely wrong. 25 to 35. 25 to 35. Okay, so that, that's a correction. Yes, yes. Now, your narrative must be seen. If you're a farmer, be a farmer. If you're a teacher, you are a teacher. If you are a doctor, be a doctor. If, you, if you're applying as a public administrator, right, and you're saying that you are in public service, be in public service. Look, guys, you cannot be working in FRSC. That way you're doing. You're helping us make sure that we drive safe in Nigeria. That is who you are. So long as that's what you want to do, apply as that person. Don't tell us you're an FRC and then you have an NGO that helps people in health and you have another NGO that helps people to be to tell stories. No, 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 no. That like, needs to be def definite. Who, ex who are you exactly? Because, you know, and, and look, for some of you, right, it may, it may take time. You may have to actually spend some more time to go back and be strategized and say to yourself, who do I want to be in the next three years? Who do I want? I, I, I was watching Suits on this trip. I started watching Suits all over again. I love series now. Mm. You know, and 
And when I was watching it, I, I got to a point where Rachel, Rachel was asking herself that who do I want to be in the next five years? And, and that question, that question she asked herself hits me hard. You have to, if she wanted to be a lawyer, then she had to take her LSAT. She did to write several exams. She did to get into Harvard. She, like she knew exactly what she wanted to do. Guys, for young people like us, it's very important you're setting up who you want to be in the and, next couple of years. And I get that narrative because in that suit, she came in as a paralegal. Yep. You know, and, and that yep. pays pretty well. Yep. Well is relative, but it pays yep. pretty well. Yep. And her father was also wealthy. Yes. And he had so, a, his own law firm. He had his own law firm. And so and she was good. she didn't really have to push herself. No. All right. But no. she decided, where do I want to be in the next day? Yes. She could have kept on just winging it. Paralegal, you're okay. You get married. You know, but she had to decide, what do I want to be in the next five years, next eight years? And then. She started doing the hard things that were necessary like, to get like, her there. Like, like, let, me, let me help you guys. If I see your name, what should resonate in my mind? Mm. Like, when I see John Obidi, what am I thinking about? When I see Buki Shonibari, what comes to my mind? When I see Adepeju Jayoba, what comes to my mind? If you hear the word Buhari, what comes to your mind? Like, guys, who do men say you are? Mm. Like, like the Bible is very explicit. You can define who you want to be, but once you're done and you get out of the picture, what do people define you as? That is what sticks, <laughs> and that is super important. You know, I, I used to be in the school of thought that hey, I don't care what people think about me. They can think, they can, they can think Jack. It doesn't matter. But hey, man. I realized that what people think about me was super important. What people think about when they see my name was super important. Who are you? This is not about the titles you have as director of partnerships. It doesn't matter. It means nothing. It, let, let me give you guys a hack. While I was here, I, like, I, I met really top guys here. In fact, I met with Dan Gote. Um, John, I'm sure you'd have seen that, that picture. And yes, I, yes, yes, yes. I saw the when picture. I was introducing myself to him, I tried, I tried something. I said, hello, sir. My name is Lambda Johnson. I'm director of Partnerships at Ventures Platform. He said, okay, who is Ventures Platform? Hey! Immediately, I just switched. I said, yeah, Ventures Platform, we help entrepreneurs, blah, 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 blah. And I'm a business storyteller. I help people tell their stories. So, wow, that's amazing. So you help me, you can help me tell my stories. Aye! Correct. <laughs> Makes sense. Makes sense. Like, I was like, oh my God, look at this. The man needed to distill exactly, director of Partnerships made sense, but he, he couldn't see how it affected his life. Exactly. <laughs> it didn't make sense. But 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 what are you? What are, your your introduction needs to come from a point of what am what am I sent to help you do? What am mm. I sent to help you achieve? So yeah. you know, guys, like I said, everything I'm talking about is going to help you resonate around several things. Guys, it's not open to 18 years old. Go download the link that John has sent you in there. Like, if you're applying for anything, you need to study the application guidelines. Mm -hmm. Study the application guidelines. We go through it, you see that it's from 25 to 35, okay? Okay, number nine. Number nine is focus. 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 Hyper focus. Um, I bought uh, a book, Essentialism. John, have you read the book before? Yes. Essentialism. So, it, has a, it has a lot of scribbled lines on the cover. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Essentialism. I, I, I'm going to read that book on my on my way back to Nigeria. Um, and and it's it's the art of doing less. Mm. You know, how how can you focus on one thing and be awesomely awesomely great at it? How can you be an amazing advocate and be amazing at it? How can you be a storyteller and you be amazing at it? You guys, let me tell you a story. I got the idea to do storytelling when I was having my first child. This was in 2016, December. I had just enrolled for a course, Neuro Linguistic Programming. Mm. And I did that course because I had, at the time, anger issues. And I had done emotional intelligence. It didn't help me. I had done anger management. It didn't help me. I had done fear mastery. It, it helps me for a while, right? But I just, you know, relapsed again. Like, so I saw this neurolinguistic program. It was, it was really expensive by, you know, Seth Usa. Um, but 
but but but I, I had to sit down and do it. And when I did it, oh my god, I realized the reason why I was always upset and how I was running away from failure and how I never liked to hear him no and how I just never liked people to question what I was saying or something. Do you know I did NLP with Innocent too? Are you serious? Just yeah, like, two levels. I did two levels too. The third level, <laughs> they've been calling for the third level. I've not gone. Yeah. If you hear me say yeah. that, I've been, I've been calling for the third level. I've not gone for the third level. I've been calling for the third level. I did, I did. Yeah. It was an amazing experience. I've been the number one advocate of that program. I, it's every, a, I believe changed, every every Nigerian who comes of age. It changed my life. <laughs> it changed yeah. my life. Mm-hmm. Now, um, somebody's asking a question. Let me see. Give me a second. Okay. Who wrote essentialism? I can't. I can I reply here, John. No, you can, you can you can you can reply like okay. In your His order. name is Greg. Right. Greg okay. McKeown. Yes. Greg G R E G. Then his son name M C M C K E O W N M C K E O W N. Yeah. Or you can go Google essentialism book. Yep. The first thing you'll see is yep. Greg McKeown. Yep. Yep. So so I did the NLP, and while I was doing NLP. I realized because it took me back to there are some things we cannot say here. I don't know how to mm. explain it okay. for you to be able to get it. Yeah. But it took me back to the beginning on why. And I was able to link all the things that I have experienced before and how they were the re- and the resultant effect was my action years after. And I saw I saw that there were stories. And I realized how powerful stories were. And I said to myself, I want to, I want to help people find their stories. That was all. And I want to become the storyteller. Look, at that time, guys, I have never heard of the concept of storytelling. I did not understand what it was. I didn't know people had written books about it. I didn't know all that. But I just decided that it was going to be what I was going to do. And I did it. I stuck at it, right? Four years after. If you're hearing the name Lambda Johnson, in front of it, you see a storyteller. And not just a storyteller, like a business storyteller, like or anything. But this is focus. You must hyper focus on what you need to do. Thank you so much, John. All right, awesome. So the power of focus, that's number nine, was it? Yep, that's number nine. All right, guys. So at this point in time, I want to get all your questions. And um when you type your question as usual, put the Q, let it be like Q. Like, so I, so, so I know it's a question. Put Q, then a colon, then put your question there so that I know it's a question and I can filter through contributions and questions. So while the questions are coming in, let's hear about the partner programs of the Mandela Washington Fellowship. What role does YALI play? What is the RLC? For those who don't get selected for the MWF, what else can they do to be a part of the mission? So the thing is, right, um, so the, the, the YALI has three main arms. Um, we have the face-to-face group, we have the RLC, and we have the NWF. All three arms make up the YALI umbrella. The face-to-face, of course, um, have meetings, uh, trainings, uh, capacity building programs in different areas. Um, um, Miracle, thanks for the reminder. I thought you won't remember. Miracle, we should be friends, though. Yeah. <laughs> we should be friends, I like you. So, so, so that's the face-to-face group. Then we have the IOC. For the IOC, um, it, it, they, they go to they go to Ghana for their training, um, but the MWL they go to the United States for their training. So people, people, you know, always do like to just um, apply for all three. Um, I I did not go for I, I wasn't part of the Yali network, the face-to-face. I, I went straight to the MWF. Um, but thinking about it now, if I had started from the face-to-face group and then the ILC and YALI, perhaps, you know, I, I wouldn't have had to spend four years to get it. But but I, do, I don't regret it because there are a lot of learnings for me. I was able to figure out the mistakes I made. I was able to iterate and change and, and ace it, right? So uh, those, are the, those are the three main groups um, that we have. Okay. So how does one apply for the RLC? Do they call for applications separately? Yes. The yes. MWF. Okay. Yes. Yes. They call for sep- um, applications separately. But for the face-to-face, you can just join. You can check for your states and check for who 
um, there, there are hubs everywhere. In Abuja, we have a Yali hub, for instance. Uh, NET, NET heads that now. She's a barrister here uh, in Abuja. Okay. Um, so several hubs, several coordinators, and the the U.S. Embassy and the U.S. Consulate both controls it. So the southern part is controlled by the consulate, and the northern part is controlled by the embassy. Um, um, yeah. Awesome. So there's a question up there on the screen. It says, how do we get your story hacks book, both hard and soft copies? Okay. Um, unfortunately, I, I I published story hack the second time and I got sold out again. And since then, I haven't printed it. You know, uh, I sincerely apologize, guys. Sometimes when you treat very important things like this as a side hustle, you... You, you don't in, you don't invest as much time as it demands and most mm. especially because i really am engaged in my nine to five well that's not my nine to five like it's my life ventures platforms uh i love i love working with startups it's it's everything so each time i get my books out it gets sold out and i just don't print it again but i have a soft copy what i may do actually is uh john i have actually planned to do um i have a course let me check for what the name of the course is yeah there's a course i have called grant storytelling there's a course i have called grant storytelling um of course we cannot fully exhaust everything that is needed here um so that course is gonna be live sometimes next week or next two weeks um I, and this is the hack right let me explain how this goes how you do one thing is how you do everything everybody out there who is telling you to apply for a fellowship or a grant or you have a huge application and opportunity the questions are the same it just changes right mm -hmm. it, it's the same thing you have to talk about the same thing you've been doing right yeah. so so this course i have is not for um mwf it's for your life yes um, um how can you use stories to ease your grant i had i had done a two-hour webinar with my friend and sister ife duro simi etty um yeah. sometimes uh six months ago or so and so i had just taken all that information and and turned it into several um uh, um, videos and worksheets and for those of you who subscribe for that course today you will be getting my books for free so I'm gonna be dropping in the story hack book for free um, if you do get in uh, to the web to the, web, no, to the online course to the online online, course yes okay. the course won't be ready until until next week John John I'm sending you a personal link okay I sent it to you. It's just uh, a payment link for it, so you can, okay. you can share with your network. Okay. Is is it on where I send it? Is it on WhatsApp? Yes, sir. WhatsApp, sir. Okay. So I, if you send it to me on WhatsApp now, I'll just put it on the screen so they yeah, can see. I have done that. Now let me go straight in. I have an interesting question from Echi Jewel. You asked to be reminded about the six steps to telling stories like a pro. Thank you so much. Amazing question. I'm going to jump right in. Number one, know your audience. If you want to tell stories like a pro, you must know your audience, guys. You must know exactly who you are speaking to. Who are you speaking to? Who and your audience is the guy who is marking. <laughs> is the guy who is marking. Who who is marking the your scripts? Who are they? What do they want? And, and, and do this. Do this. This is what I did. This is what I did. And I'm telling you a secret. I did. Everybody who had ever gotten into the Mandela Washington Fellowship, I checked for them. Like go to IREX. Um, John, let me just send you the link. Rx Olamide people. The org John, sorry. That's okay. 
Thank you. I'm trying to help people here. All right. Allow me to. Okay, John. So I've sent you the link for my own um, profile. I sent you on WhatsApp. Okay. You can post it to them again. Okay. Now, guys, if you see mine, I would like you to go check for every other person who had applied. Now, I specifically went to see not just Nigerians, but Africans. So what profile is this again? This is my own profile on IREX. Okay, what is IREX? Oh, interesting. Now, IREX are the guys who implement the Mandela Washington Fellowship. Okay, implementation partners. Yes. Okay. So, you know how you need a not for profit organization to implement a program like this? They are the ones who implement the Mandela Washington Fellowship. Gotcha. Fantastic. Now, what I did was to go check the profile of every single person who has ever gotten in. And guess what? For those who were business and entrepreneurship in my own track, I checked for them on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, and followed them. I was looking at their life. What exactly are they doing? Who are they talking to? What's their circle? How are they doing? How are they posting? What is the impact? What's the difference? What makes this person a fellow? If they have programs in Abuja, I was going to attend. If they wrote a book, I was going to buy. I just needed to get into the mind of these people. Because if you could be selected, there, ha there has to be something special about you that made you selected. Do you get what I mean, guys? Now, mm. so now what I did, so you must know all your audience. Know the people. Know, check them, right? Check them to see. You know, I was, I was excited when John posted on, on the group and said, um, this program is happening. Now, guess who will be the person to train you on this mm -hmm. and you listed several people my friend and sister Gucci Sissy Chick was mentioned Adipeji was mentioned that those people who were mentioning people have a better chance to get into MWF than those people who don't know anybody who are fellows at all mm -hmm. because what you've done is to go check and see for sure who are the people who have gotten this before number two make yourself the side chick and not the hero I'm sorry I said side chick Forgive me, it's not chick. Sidekick. John. I heard her say, let me just clap. <laughs> John, if you laugh. <laughs> <laughs> so make yourself the sidekick and not the hero. You know, I, and let me take you to the church. I'm a Christian, so pardon me. Now, if your pastor always talks about himself, will you like that man? John, answer the question. Likely not. Likely not. Why? It's boring. It's boring. Because he's yeah. going to talk about himself on Sunday. He's going to talk about himself on Tuesday, on Wednesday, on Thursday. The next Sunday, he said the same stories over and over again. And yeah. he knew what I, when I was in school, when yeah. I did this, when I, when I, when I. And then suddenly we think ourselves, is this man Jesus? Mm. Are, you, are you the Jesus? Like, why? Are you the is healing the person? But you know what? If this man comes and talks about the fact that somebody else was one who did the hack, he realized that if he studies the Bible, he will be able to live a better life. He realized himself that he was able to pay his tithes. He was able to get some certain breakthroughs. He realized that if he was able to sow a certain seed, he was able to get some access. Like, and he didn't, he, he, he didn't do anything, no. All he did was to provide a platform. That's all. Like, like John here is the sidekick, not the hero. He has made Lamide Johnson the hero. But the truth is that it is just plan. It's not my hundred 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 thousand people, John. It's your own, no. But you have deceived everybody in Head Start Africa. You deceived all of them to make them feel like, look, I'm only helping you guys. I'm helping mm. people to get access. I don't have anything to do with it. Let me bring Lamide Johnson. He's going to speak to you people. I want you people to be helped. Mm. That's what you're, that way I've done. Now people mm. would accept you more than saying, my name is John Obidi. I'm going to teach you how to get into MWF. Mm. They're like, who are you? Like, if I write, like, every time I have written that I'm going to train people on, on the fellowship, the first time I did this, I had, like, 200 people apply for it. This time around, my Facebook is, is, is loading with over 300 or 400 people asking me for friend requests. It didn't happen before. Why? It's very simple, very simple. John made me look like the hero. And said, this guy is the president of the Mandela Washington Fellowship in Nigeria. He's been there. He knows exactly what to do. Come listen to him. Now, let me bring this down. If you are in social entrepreneurship, for instance, 
and you're helping a community, women in the community, to get access to financial services. You cannot position yourself as the savior of the community. No. You have to position the women as the heroes of their community. Uh, they have to be the ones who the people who are reviewing your application see, not you. Uh, All you have to do is to be the person that creates that platform for them. Uh, if you are with me, say, I'm with you, Lamide. We are with you, Lamide. Thank you very much. Like you, John, I wasn't asking you. What's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> are they following their work now? <laughs> So, 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 so let them be the hero, not you. We are tired of hearing your story. We want to hear the story of your customers. We want to hear the story now. If you're in business, we should hear the story of your customers. We should hear the stories of your investors. We should hear the stories of your employees. That's what we want to hear. If you are in civic leadership, we should hear the story of the people. We should hear the story of the nation. Hear the story of, of the community, not your story. That's what we want to do. Number three. Tell the story of how you discovered the problem. Tell the story of how you discovered the problem. Lamde, these this, this steps, are they written down or typed somewhere? Yes, I have. I'm, 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 reading, I'm, I'm seeing everything from my notes here. Want me to share with you? Yes, please. OK. I I'll could scroll it at the bottom for them. So I'm going to write nine steps, nine steps to easing any application. So I'm sending the first the nine steps to you. Okay. I've sent it to you now. Okay. And then the second one I'm going to send is the six steps to tell you stories like a pro. Okay, got it. Good stuff. I've sent that to you too. All right, thank you. Great. So tell the story of how you discovered the problem. What happened? You were in the, in the public service. Somebody who had asked a question that he's in government. How am I going to do? What am I going to say? Um, imagine if you're in government and I don't know the people who do this uh, drug trafficking thing, uh, NDLA, I guess. Yes. Uh, I did once, John, I'm not sure. It's NDLA. Good. So if you're in NDLA and you are, you are an, an admin officer, for instance, I, I wish I could speak to, to the audience, John. I wish I could connect to them and pick up somebody who is in government and ask questions. Instead of making assumptions, it's like, okay, okay, it really helped me. But 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 it's fine. I'm gonna go ahead to, to to try as much as possible. You're an admin officer in NDLA. Are you going to tell the people who are reviewing your application that all you are doing is writing memos, writing minutes, sending emails, picking phone calls? Is that what is that what you're gonna say you're doing? Is that what you're gonna say you're doing? No, what you're doing is way more than that, guys. Because the fact that you are part of them makes the entire mission of NDLE your mission. And what is it? You're helping to curb drop trafficking in Nigeria. Like, like it's very important. That's super critical for you to be able to own the, the, the vision or the mission of the company you're working for. Number four, create tension with your problem. I like this part because I'm going to give a very, very sassy illustration for it. Uh, John, for all the girls you have toasted, eh? Yes. John, what did I just say? For all the girls I have toasted. Good. You know, uh, you know I don't know, man. Wait, I know the human being. I don't man, I don't know, John. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. John, I don't know. John, I don't know. Now, for all the jo girls John and I have toasted, uh -huh. we always create tension that look, I, I have a bright future. I know I study fisheries and wildlife in the university. And I went to school, I studied for five years. And now I'm looking thin, like a fish, bonga fish. I have no television, I don't have car, I'm in keke. But I have a feeling that, see, five years from today, I'll be a big guy. I will have chicks, you will be shocked where it came from. I'll be traveling the world five years from now. It's better you follow me now that I am nobody. Because when I become somebody, it may be too late. Once we have, and listen guys, listen. It's the same story John has told all the girls he has toasted. All of them. All. All. And they are all falling. Same narrative. I, I can neither confirm nor deny this, but, but keep going. It's okay, John. Let's keep on. <laughs> let, 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 let's, let's keep on this conversation. <laughs> let's keep on this conversation. I, I don't know why, but it always works every freaking time. Let me make it worse. In church, your pastor will tell you, 
if you don't pay your tithes, there'll be divorce in your <laughs> in your in your what again? In your house. Yeah. Why why do you have to threaten me? But it works every time. He's creating a tension with the problem. Like, look, guys, if you don't pay your tithe, there'll be problems. And because it happened to one person, it can happen to everybody. That's what they will say. Should I go on? Or oh, this is all. Yeah. No, this go on. Is... Now, listen, guys, what, what you need to understand is that you need to create a tension with the problem you have identified. <laughs> and why you are the best person to solve that problem. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. If I am not in NDLE, the amount of kids will be taking drugs. That's how bad it is. If if I'm not helping human trafficking, small children, even your sister, will be taken to Italy and be used for prostitution. That's how oh. bad it is. You need, to, you need to make it look bad. If I'm not in agriculture, helping to breed fish, people will become hungry. If I am not a teacher in a government school, the government schools in Nigeria will not have quality teachers and there will be no quality education. You need to create a tension with the story so that the person that is reviewing your application, the mind will be beating that, ah, I need this person to solve this problem. Yeah. Number one, two, three, four, five. Number five, articulate transformation. I love this part. I love this part. And this part is about blowing your trumpets. This is about, about blowing your trumpets. Articulate transformation. What changed? The moment Paystack came into the country, suddenly, who can receive payments online? Guys, are you with me? Yes, sir. The moment Paystack came in, suddenly people are using Instagram to collect payments. You know? The moment we have Head Start Africa community, suddenly, a hundred thousand people come together and they're able to learn and network and get mentored on that one platform on the go. Suddenly, John is in Lagos, Lamide is in New York. Somebody, everybody's everywhere. Like, I, if I can, if I just ask you, now, where are you coming from? People will say oh. that up everywhere in the country on one platform in the night in Nigeria, learning how. That is that is showing the transformation. How have people's lives become better? Like John, I'm looking forward to the time when you are able to show us statistics. Like John, I, don't worry. I think I'll share the book with you. Okay. I'll, I'll share the book I bought with you. It's how to use data to tell stories. Like mm. how many people are on your platform? How many people log in every day? How many people enter into your webinars, programs? Mm. How many people subscribe to your product? How many people connect? How many people respond to each of your posts? How many people yeah. see it? Like how? How can you take all this information and write a story about it that people can understand? Mm. So you need to articulate transformation. People, people's lives are transformed daily. Daily on your platform, John. People mm. need to see it. Number one, two, three, four, five, six. Number six, be clear about what is in front of you. Be clear about what is in front of you. Be clear about what is in front of you. Some people don't get into the application because... The people who are reviewing it don't think you'll come back to the country, Nigeria. I will say what I said again. You have, you know, when you go for a visa interview, for those of you who have gone for a visa interviews, they will say that they'll try and find a compelling reason why you come back to the country. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they'll ask you questions like, do you have kids? Do you have a job? Where's your family at? You know, and those people who have ties to the country are people who are more likely to get the, the visa. Okay? Now, when you're writing applications like this, for instance, for those of us who got into the fellowship, we cannot be away from the United States, from our country for the next two years. I cannot migrate to the United States, no matter what the amount of connections I have in the United States now. I can't say I'm coming here to stay. I have to always go back to the country. And let me explain it. When I say you must be clear about what is in front of you, it means what is that thing you are doing that you want to continue to do or you want to optimize? If you are training 100 people before, do you want to now train 100,000 people? And how do you want to make that happen? That's what is important. That's key. They need to see it in your application. 
it must be subtly mentioned, subtly mentioned that yeah, I can do better than I'm doing and I need the United States to make it happen. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, that's it. Okay, so quickly, this que question has been here for, for a while. Tell it me. says, I'm a, I'm a teacher in a government school. Mm -hmm. I wrote a book on teaching. I help mm -hmm. teachers to create alternative income through writing books um, and so on. She, but she, I can't find the question, but she's asking what track should she apply for? Hmm. Does she own the school? She doesn't say government no, school. No, she's, she's a teacher in a government school. So I would like that person to go up higher. Like, go up higher. Um, you teach people to write books. is is great. While it's great, it can be better. Mm. If you're in a government school, how have you helped the, the school? Because if you're in a government school, your it's your mission to the teachers or the mission is to the students. Let me, let me explain it. If I'm thinking of a government school, I'm thinking of the ratio of teachers to students. So I'm going to place it like ratio 100 to one teacher. It's, it can be that bad. At least that's the kind of government school I went to, even if it's in Abuja. Mm. So if I'm going to have only 20 teachers in a school, that means I have like a thousand students. Two thousand yeah. students. Yeah. So who would you rather be helping? <clears throat> students or the teachers? Teachers? Or the students? Well, it depends on, on the level of impact, I guess. Now, so you need to be she needs to be able to spread her impact to mm. affect both the kids and the teachers. If I'm gonna I'm have that person as how how have you transformed your government school? You need to look talk about how uh, terrible the government institutions are and how some teachers won't come to work and how and how the infrastructure in the school is not great and how you have been able to write applications or programs that has helped the the school secure computer uh, equipment in the lab. Okay. How have you been able to make sure the library is stocked with books? How have you set up extra moral activities for the teach for the students who are applying for 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 WIEC or JAM and they're able to ace it? How have you what what is the extra thing you have done? You know, so this helping students to teach us to earn more money is also great. But the narrative has to be that teachers don't earn as much. Like in Nigeria, teachers in government school don't earn as much. And the thing is that because they don't earn as much, they don't give as much time to the students. Now, mm -hmm. if you're able to create an extra source of income for the teachers, they will be able to spend, because they're making more money in their leisure time, they now have better motivation to be in classes. Did you see how I turned the narrative? Yeah. That is what you must be thinking about. And so it's not just about writing books. Several other things can happen. Talk about digital marketing. Talk about website designs. Talk about getting several skills. Talk about learning, learning and that skill as part from just being a teacher. Like if you talk about this and how it has the impact has um has has changed the way teachers teach in government schools, that's gonna be superb. Next question, please. All right. So Chukwameka Confidence says, how does volunteer, does volunteering count as professional experience? Of course. Sir. Volunteering is one of the most critical parts. Like I, I put I put like four or five volunteering activities that I have done. Like, let me explain to you guys. People in the United States take volunteering like seriously. Like what I've just done now, let me explain what I'm doing now. Here today, now mm -hmm. on Let's Start Africa community mm -hmm. is going to my resume. Look, <laughs> I, listen to me, guys. Listen to me, guys. I know, I know it is how many John, how many people are alive? 165 people. Thank you. Yeah, John. I hope you know it's one than six thousand people I've spoken to today. Because yes. so long as this is going to be on your platform, is all yes. of them I have reached. Yes. <laughs> so, I'm going to say, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I've volunteered my time because John is not paying for it. You yes. know, when I volunteer my time, it's a big deal. It is a big deal. People, no. people no. in Nigeria, people in Nigeria don't know how much of a big deal volunteering is. Yes. But even I know in, in the USA, you, when you say you volunteered at something, it's seen as a very big Huge. deal. 
It's huge. So, Listen to me, guys. Yeah. Listen to me. All the time my pastor has taken from me is in my resume. Volunteer. He's a volunteer. <laughs> I'm telling you. Like, like, so, like, if you're a church worker, he's volunteer. Church, I mean, is I volunteered. <laughs> I volunteered my time. It's, it's super, super, super important for you to, to volunteer for somebody, for an organization. Look, guys, if you're not volunteering now, go look for where to volunteer, please. And make sure it's in line with what you want to do with your life. So the volunteering that goes on in my church is that I help speak to young people to establish their businesses. Mm. But it's not aligned with what I'm doing. So even if I'm in prayer department and I'm praying, it's okay. But I, I, the one I've helped, the people in my prayer unit, eh, that I've helped to start their business, eh, is volunteering. Mm. So is this on my resume? You know, so this is, this is super important. Physical. Next question, please. All right. Um, someone says, you said you would uh, tell those in civil service how to go about their application. I had mentioned it. I hope you're listening to when I mentioned it. I had given it. Uh, okay. Given it. So maybe they said it before. Yeah, uh, I mentioned it. How, okay. how you cannot, and let me repeat it for just, just in case. How I said that you can't just think that because you're an admin person in, in, in the government entity, it means that's all you're doing. No. You need to talk about the global picture of what the organization is doing. Okay. Next question. If I work with a USAID NGO, working with people in the rural areas in social behavior change, to gosh, we should construct your sentences correctly. Um, let me, can, you see what, can you see the question on the screen? I've seen it. Now, guys, okay, so for, the person speak, for the person who is speaking now, um, yes, you can apply. And in okay. fact, you have a better chance of applying to win. Awesome. Um, if I tell you that I changed my job because I wanted to be, have a better opportunity to get into the fellowships and the grants I was seeing, would you guys believe me? Like, that's how deliberate I was. Yeah. Like, I had to leave a university because it was not business. Mm. And I looked for a company that helped businesses. I didn't look for a company that does business. I looked for a company that helped businesses. Did you see the difference? Like, yes. Super, super critical. So if you're going to work, if you're doing health things and you want to do such a behavioral change and you work in a USAID, that's superb. Like, that's a superb. Like, like, that's really, really, really great. So, hey, you should apply. Okay. Another yeah. one saying, I'm an agribusiness consultant. I have worked with several individuals helping them to set up their farms. How can I leverage my skills with the government's local and international NGOs? You have answered the question already. You help okay. several people, individuals, Set of their farms like that's super critical right uh, let, let me let me explain this to you guys let me explain the concept of the top of the pyramid okay um uh, it's called a patriarchal system mm. where i can either train you on how to tell stories or i can train other people to train people to tell stories does it make sense yes it's about the patriarchal system. My 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 emotional mentor. Um, so I have two mentors, mm. three coaches actually. The first is Samoba Femi, who mm. who who is who is my therapist and mm. helps me with all the emotional issues in life. Second is my business mentor, Steve Harris, mm. and the third is my spiritual mentor, Samoye. Um, mm. My, my mentor says, right, that it is super critical for you to be able to establish. Hello? Yes. John, can you put the last question again, please? Because I had a point. Did the you... last question. Sorry about that. Yeah, sorry. I, I I had I saw a point and I needed to tackle it. You have moved really. You moved really fast. Yes, I moved quickly. Away. I'm scrolling to find it again. Yeah, it was if I work with a USAID NGO working with people in the rural area. Okay, thank you. Now, my, my my emotional mentor, some bad for me. Yeah, doesn't just help individuals. To have emotional mastery he helps coach he helps build coaches <laughs> so that they can go help other people that's a patriarchal system so the fact that you are you you are not just having a farm 
right? But you're going ahead to help people set up farm. It's a patriarchal system. You've you've gone up higher, right? And and those are the kind of people. Those are the kind of people we 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 see as leaders. Okay. So you have a really good chance. You have a really really good chance. Okay. Next question, John. Awesome. Um. Someone said it's a very long one. What are examples of supplemental questions one can upload? Supplemental, do, supplemental, no, not su supplementary should be. Yes. Supplementary documents one can upload. That's it, there's a number of questions, but that's number one. Yeah, guys, um, I have to be honest with you. I don't know because in the first year, I uploaded five, three documents or two documents one from a university in the US, one from my school, <clears throat> Uta, telling me that I was the best departmental president. One from the current place of work, letter of recommendations, it didn't work. Second year, same thing, it didn't work. Third year, same thing, it didn't work. Fourth year, I didn't, I didn't upload anything. And I entered. <clears throat> if I'm going to tell you this is a document, this is a document, this is a document you should have, then I, I, I would, I'll be lying to you. And I, I don't want to do that on the call, I'm sorry. So awesome. if you think that you need a letter of recommendation from someone or you've gotten before that testifies to what you've done, why not you can put it in um you can put it in but i don't know if it will increase your chances of getting it okay awesome number two about current jobs if my current job is not consistent with the story i want to tell can i put my part-time volunteering job which is consistent as my current job that's a very interesting question you remember when i told you they went to my linkedin to check what is the linkedin yeah. oh interesting let me explain it to you. Why do a job that only pays you a salary but has no connection to your life? Exactly. Why waste why. time? Why, like, like young people, guys, 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 please. Why do you want to waste a moment of your time, your precious time, in a job you have zero interest in, you're, you're not passionate about, or it doesn't add up to your life? Why, why do you mm. want to do that? And, and people, people see. People see in between the lines. And that's the reason they're asking you to put in your professional experiences. Because they want to be able to figure out if you are indeed very deliberate with the kind of life you're living. Are you yeah. are you seeing a storyteller yet to work with an organization that does not tell stories? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So that's yeah. a problem. That's gonna be a problem. Are you gonna tell us you are in health, but you work with business startups? Are you gonna tell us you are doing maternity health and you work with HIV and AIDS. Like, mm. uh, there, there has to be an alignment. You remember when I said you have to be consistent? Narrative yeah. is important. So that, when I say to you that, look, some of you, if you want to have a better chance for getting such opportunities, some of you may have to change your jobs. You may have to switch jobs. You may have to, you may have to look for other opportunities. You know, several things will have to change your life. I, I told you I had to resign from a very good job. Like, this was a great job, African University of Science and Technology. Check it out. I was having the time of my life. But mm. I realized that if I if I stayed here, my future wasn't going to be just human resource. Now, human resource is great. I still do it now. But that was not the life I wanted. I wanted to help business owners build amazing businesses in Africa. That's what I want to do. I want to have a business school. That's what I want to do in my life. So I'm not going to do that from a HR standpoint. I needed, I needed something more. Do you get mm. what I mean? And so yeah. the more was what I needed. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Number three is, <laughs> okay. Number three was, would you be so kind as to give my application a review? Who is this person? It's not showing the person's name. Of course I will. John, I'm going to send you my email address. Okay. So you can send me an email. Okay. okay. But make sure you put it on a Google doc. That's the only way I can review it. Okay. So put it on a Google Doc, and I'll be able to comment on it. That's okay. That's where I can help. That's only okay. where I can really, really help. Okay. So would you like me to display the email? Yes, please. Okay. All right. So I'm getting that ready to be displayed at the bottom of the screen. Um, meanwhile, what's the next question? Let me see. Let me see. Okay, so we have this one on the screen from Debor John says, what do you have to say about the three non-compulsory attachments towards the end of the application? I think you may have asked about that. Already. 
Okay. Okay. So um, this is another Facebook user says, what about icons in JCI and a former director of training who has organized trainings? Can one put this as part of the application? I don't understand the question. Uh, you, you know what JCI is? Junior yeah. Chambers? Yeah. So that's if, if, if their designation there could also factor in as an advantage in the application. Um, I, are you applying in civic leadership and you, you're helping people get at pro bono? Exactly. Are gotcha. you... Are you helping people? Yeah. So it shouldn't it, it shouldn't be just because you are in and you are part of JCI or you have a post. But what exactly are you doing? How does it and, help? And I think that's why that thing you said really comes to comes into play. Impact storytelling. How yep. are you impacting society? Yep. It's not about who you are, but what you're doing for the community. Yep. yep. Yeah. So you just need to better position that. Okay. I've seen the question that I, that you asked me for that I was looking for. So that's what you. I just put it on the screen now. Okay, uh, great. I scrolled and found it. All right, so let's move on. Somebody said, I currently manage a distribution business, but I'm passionate about building and promoting SMEs in Africa. Do I have a chance? So now what you're doing now is business, distribution business, okay? And you are managing it. So that's huge. That means you have a business. So if you have a business, do you also train people? Like you have a business and do you set up a platform to train people? Do you train women in business? Do you train wrong people in business? Do you show people the hack? Because you're successful. You cannot treat people if you're not successful. So when you're successful in your business, do you train people on it? Like, we need to be able to see the fact that what that you're doing, are you also helping people in the, on the side? I was yeah. doing an interview recently, and they asked me, what do I want to do with my life? That was, that was a, John, that was a, that was a tricky question. You know, yeah. me, if, if you are not doing this, what would you rather do? Um, yeah. This went straight up. I want to establish a business school. The passion with which I spoke about it, the guys were happy. It's, it's okay, it's okay. Why? Because it aligned. It's aligned. Yeah. It's aligned with what they are doing. They don't have a business school, but they're helping young people. They're helping startups. They're they are training them. They are do you get what I mean? Same guys. So yeah. it's it's it, it, it aligns, right? So whatever it's you're doing, it has to align. Awesome, awesome. So the one on the screen now says, if you're asked what problem are you solving, which of the nine steps can answer this? Uh Give me a second, I'm trying to check it. Okay. So I'm going to start with, now, I'm going to start with telling the story of how you discovered the problem. Okay. And I'm going to, and I'm going to articulate transformation. Okay. Yeah. All right. Next question comes from Blessing Yapi. She says, are you in any way disadvantaged if your business is not registered, especially if you are going for the leadership business track? Um, but it, no, you're not. When I was applying, I applied with two companies, Ventures Platform and the Business Storytelling Company. The oh. Business Storytelling Company was not registered at the time. But when you get to the United States, trust me, you want to have your business registered because people will deal with serious people. Okay, awesome. Let's see the next one. Tobina Ezenwa says, how do we structure our volunteering experience into our resume? Um, in they, they they give you a structure for your resume there's a structure for your resume and you only have to impute the answers and there's a place where you put the volunteering experience so you have to put it in okay um Olari waju is asking i work in a private institution and which of the which of which one can i apply for civic leadership or business i'll do civic leadership okay let me find the next one. All right, this is uh, pretty lengthy. It says, I'm a baker and I help up and coming bakers understand the business of baking by teaching tips and telling personal stories related to this, including mentorship. How do I position myself in applying for the business and entrepreneurship track as one who is making impact? If you're going to the village, community, and doing mm. community work and teaching the people there for free, and suddenly the people start making money, and they're able to send their children to school, eh? Exactly. And support the house. Then, you, then that's impact. Like, guys, I, I hope you understand when I say impact stories. Yes, impact. Impact. Mm -hmm. Very it's word. Yeah, what, what you just yeah. told me now is you, the hero. Yeah. I, you see, I am a baker. I help. How come me? I... <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> like, but you need to show your impact. Stop being the heroes, man. Yeah. Like, the customers have to be the heroes. The people you're helping need to be the heroes. So how has how has how has a uh, uh, Fumi, who is a, a villager, suddenly sent her children to school because she learned how to bake? But, yeah. but the question will now be: bake cake? Do they buy cake in the in, in the communities? Is cake not mm. for? It's not birthdays and stuff. So instead of just baking, can you talk about confectionaries? Can you talk about bonds? Akara. How, how can they bake it in a healthy way? How can these people um, learn how to cook and sell in their immediate communities? How can they learn how to package it? How can they increase the shelf life of their food? Like, that's what you should be talking about, all right? Okay, awesome. So the next one is on the screen. As a parents coach and child sex educationist, can I apply and do I stand a chance? You have a fantastic chance of like fantastic as a matter of fact because this is a huge issue both in nigeria and the united states and needs to be solved awesome. there are very few people there awesome divine is it says as a storyteller aside being an entrepreneur are there institutions one can get affiliated with or work for in order to give me better chances you can't do that now yeah and expect the the impacts to be because they're going to look at timelines yes and and why they, yeah, they respond to the question, time is a key, right? And so when I say you have to del deliberate, it means even if you're going to start now, I want you to be thinking about next year. Let's hope you get in now. But if you, if you don't get in now, they spend the next one year getting affiliated to organizations and companies that are going to help you better have a chance to win. Awesome. Next one's on the screen. It says, I currently manage a You distribution. answered that before. I answered okay. it. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Let me see. Okay, Ganiu Idris Adedayo says, I was the former president of my department during my university days. I also have also volunteered for several NGOs during my school days and service year. Now I work full-time as an online marketer. Do you think I have a higher chance of being selected? I don't know. You tell me. Okay, impact. Yeah, you tell me. I don't know. Impact. All right, another one. I am a human capacity trainer and business developer. I have helped lots of people get back to school and start businesses. I own business training school, a business training school, and I organize business training on social media platforms. Do I stand a chance? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Awesome. All right, so that's the last question. All right, guys, look at the bottom of your screen. I just put Lamide's email address there. So to get your application reviewed by Lamide Johnson, send an email to Johnson or Lamide01 at gmail.com is scrolling right now at the bottom of your screen so you can take a screenshot if you wish or write it down all's good all's good um so can i'll just, I'll just, I'll just can, yeah can, go on can you also post the haystack link for those who want me to who want to subscribe for the courses yes um, yes unfortunately i don't take too many people for such courses when i do them um i can only have a chance to train 10 people at, this, at the time um, I have I have a full time job, and I really do not like to do a lot of crowd. Okay. So for the first ten people, I'm going to close it up and give ten people subscribe. For it. All right, that is on the screen now. All right, so to get your application reviewed by Lamide Johnson, send an email to the email address on the screen now, and right after that announcement, you're going to see the link to purchase Lamide Johnson's storytelling course. Okay, so it's on the screen right now. It says um, purchase Lamide Johnson's storytelling course and the paystack link is just right there. All right, so we'll take this final one and we'll call it a day. I love because... this one. I love this one, John. My okay. total enterprise trains physically challenged persons with IT skills. What okay. would you advise as regards to telling the full story of just one of our trainers, trainees or summarizing more than one of them? Look, you have an amazing story. This person should reach out to me. He sent me a me message on Facebook Messenger. I don't have it in my phone, but that's John Akiola. Okay, good. I can't see the person. Oh, you just send me an email. I'm going to introduce you to somebody who who is working with physically challenged people, uh, okay. and he got a grant of 150,000 USD to Whoa, set up. Yeah, to set up a hub for physically challenged individuals. Amazing. Okay. I, I was I was in him here in New York. And he's getting awesome. super, super, super connections. Awesome. This can happen. There, there's so much of people who are helping the physically and socially disadvantaged. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. 
Awesome. All right, so we'll take this final question so that we can release you today. It says, uh, thank you, John and Lamide. Aside from being an agro business, I think it's agro, agro, agro business consultant, I'm currently working with seasoned agro entrepreneurs to bring about youth motivation to embrace agriculture in Nigeria. On, on my Facebook platform, I organize weekly talk shows between experts and my audience. What chance do I have to project this globally? Um, you need to do more um, than you have spoken about now. Um, yeah. Like, what's going to make you exceptional? Why do we need you? Why are you different from every other person? Mm. This is a question you need to be to answer. It's, um, I'm, I'm perhaps they, they, they might need numbers. Like, yeah. okay, okay, how many people have you trained? What is the impact that these people you've trained have made exactly. in society? How exactly. can you feel that? What makes you what makes it different? Why 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 choose you? Why should we choose you? Yeah. Why 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 should you win? Yeah, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. All right. So that is that. This has been such an enlightening session. Um, guys, look at the announcements at the bottom of the screen again to get your application. I don't know if the announcement is visible to you, Lamide, is it? It is, I can see it. Okay, great. To get your application reviewed, send an email to johnsonolamide01 at gmail.com. And you can also purchase his storytelling course. The pay stack link is right there at the bottom of the screen. Um, yes. And what else? Was there any other announcements? That's about that. All right, guys, it's been real. This has been the Mandela Washington Fellowship Application Training with Lamide Johnson. Lamide Johnson, as you know, is the president of the Mandela Washington Fellows in Nigeria. He is also an alumni of the Mandela Washington Fellowship Program. Recently, he was selected as a goalkeeper. Um, that is one of the initiatives of, was that for Bill Gates or Bill and Melinda Gates, right? Yep. Awesome. So he was just selected as a goalkeeper, one of the, um, initiatives of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and it's all an offshoot of his exploits that started from him being a Mandela Washington fellow. And there's one thing I always tell people on Head Start Africa, either in my physical events or in virtual trainings like this, and that is this: um, so somebody once said, "Don't listen to, don't, don't just listen to successful people. Watch them and do what they do." So I'm a scientist, so it's my natural proclivity to reverse engineer people's success stories. So if you look at Lamide Johnson now, he has taught us amazingly well, but go beyond that and look into his story, okay? He, he, he started out applying, he did this four times, and he had to make some strategic moves in order to stand a better chance. He changed his jobs, he did certain things to his application, he applied four times, finally got applied, he didn't stop there. Along the way, he ran for office. He ran for office, it gave him way more eligibility than people who just came to do what they sent him to do and they left. He did even more, more than was expected of him. And now he didn't even apply to be a goalkeeper. He was nominated by somebody who had seen his track record, seen his work, and that has placed him on a, even a, a higher pedestal. There are people who have been trying to apply to get US visa. They've been denied, denied, denied. Lamide goes and comes. It's like he's crossing the road to go to the market. John, all right? you don't put me in trouble. Now, now, <laughs> now he, Lamide is talking to us now all the way from New York. All right, he is balling. All expense paid. He's not paying one cobble from his pocket. Meanwhile, we have people that are selling their father's land <laughs> just so that they can go through Libya. <laughs> yeah. You know, so this is what being strategic with your life will do for you. And I, I've always been shouting about it. Get strategic now. Get strategic now. Some of you will see me as John the Baptist, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. All right, but look at what your mates, your mates, see what your mates is doing. I'll tell you like that. See what your mates is doing in your life. So next time I bash Big Brother and Nigeria, if I see your, your comments there, that if you don't support me that comment section, you are leaving this group. I'm joking. But reverse engineer his story and see how you can get strategic. I, I I like to say that those of you who are young, don't waste your youth. You can see how they've given benchmark now, 25 to 35. So if you use your youth to now play, you're experimenting, do things that do not concern you. It's not when you well, once you pass 35, it's, it's gone. And I'm, and I'm sure Lamede can bear witness to this, that even in the United States, most of the, of the opportunities, even in the United States, are age sensitive. So I, I, I hate it when people say, oh, it's never too late to pursue your dreams. No, my dear, that's not the reality of the world system. I did not design the system. I met it there. The reality of the world system now is that opportunities are age sensitive. You have under 20, 
you have under 25, you have under 30, you have under 35, and the quarter quarter of them all, those that are merciful, is under 40. But once you have crossed 40, man, <laughs> okay? So if you are young, redeem the times. This is the time to get serious. If you have any questions, if you need direction, that is what Head South Africa is all about. We have people like Lamide Johnson. He's made his email address open. He's on Facebook. People have certain friend requests. You can, if you can, if you can be his friend on Facebook. You can follow him um, on, on, on Facebook here. You can follow him on Instagram. That's what we are here for. Redeem the times and make the rest of your life the best of your life. Thank you so much, Lamide Johnson. God bless you. Um, I wish you even more success in your in your future engagements. Once yeah. the, your, your books are republished or are reprinted again, let us know so that we can announce and people here can get their copies. Thank Definitely. you so much. Thank you so much. Man. All right. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. Thank you. Cheers. All right, guys. We will see you on the other side. Cool, 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 cool.